Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Bread, bread, and more bread. Three weeks ago, we addressed the feeding of the 5,000 with five breads. Two weeks ago, Jesus walked on the water and mentioned that they did not understand about the loaves or the breads. Last week and this week in our gospel text, Jesus tells us that he is the bread of life. I don't know if you noticed it, but last week's gospel is so similar to this week that you may have thought as I was reading it, isn't this the gospel text from last week? Now this miraculous bread is an amazing thing. And I know you just can't wait to hear another sermon about bread. But we will be taking a look at St. Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus today. Don't worry, we will be able to make a connection to the bread of life. Who says in our gospel text today, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. The bread of life and God's word are one. Because Christ is the word made flesh. So his word and the Holy Spirit draw us in. Notice who is doing the verbs? God, not you. We do not choose God. As a matter of fact, the unregenerate, sinful person who is dead in their sins can only reject the bread of life because of our broken and fallen nature. It's part of our genetic makeup. And sin will go to great extent in its own self-centered selfishness to protect itself against God and to protect its God, which is self. This is why the arrogance of the world should not surprise us. <clears throat> because we carry it as well. We are new creations in Christ, but we struggle with the old Adam every day of our lives. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. Due to their hardness of heart, they have become callous. Sound familiar? Our society has become desensitized to the debase nature of our culture. Our hearts and our consciences as well have developed calluses to the point that we don't see and hear many times things that are offensive to God and His law, blinding us from just how bad it is. Countless unborn and infirmed members of our society are murdered every day, sacrificed on the altar of self, convenience, and greed. And what do we do? To speak for those who cannot? Where is our righteous anger? God's name is thrown around like it's trash, sacrificed on the altar of self-expression. What do we do to preserve the name of our Lord and Savior? 
Oh my God and Jesus Christ should be spoken in prayer, not as methods of exclamation, <clears throat> and especially not as curses or astonishment. Our entertainment and media call evil good and good evil. The traditional family, chastity, virtue, kindness, modesty, are thrown away like spoiled meat, like a weakness that you have if you don't get on top and get your own. Not only do we not stand up for God's truth and His design in <clears throat> for having children in a safe two-parent home with the mother and a father who live sacrificial lives for the benefit of those children, not only do we not really speak very loudly to protect this great gift from God, but we entertain ourselves with the very same media outlets. Everyone else and everything about it tears down what God upholds as good and pleasing to Him. It tears down everything that we hold sacred. They have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way that you learned Christ. Put off your old self, your former manner of life, with corrupt and deceitful desires, Put away falsehood. Put away all bitterness, wrath, slander, and malice. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Anger is not sinful, but this text clearly says we should not take it with us to bed. We should deal with it and go to bed with a clear conscience. Because if we go to bed and see, then hold on to anger for more days than the single day and deal with it, then it's self-centered anger that will harm us and will harm others. But anger in and of itself is not sinful. As a matter of fact, some of the things I just mentioned should make you angry. Hopefully to the point of doing something to protect life, to protect the family. Being a good citizen, a neighbor, a parent, a child, a student, a teacher, none of these is easy. But our call to service, just the same. <clears throat> it is what we do with that anger that often leads to sin. If I stand for God's truth and speak the truth in love, discipline those who I am called to discipline, no matter how unpleasant it is, that is God-pleasing use of anger. But loud, self-centered proclamations Striking out at my enemies, word in word and deed, striking out at my loved ones in word and deed, this is sin on top of sin. Pain leading to more pain. The reason two wrongs don't make a right is because it's accumulation of the negative. Negative one plus negative one equals negative two. It's simple math. Let the thief steal no longer, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, <clears throat> so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. If our laziness gives cost to someone else, this is theft. Our society fosters an entitlement mentality. 
almost half of our country lives on the other half. And we are not talking about people who are talking about, we're talking about whole households here. No one owes you anything. We all owe everything to God. So that earning things through honest work lead to us being able to help others in need. And boy, is there need out there. Our neighbors are hurting. Unemployment in our country is at epidemic proportions. And many who would love to work have no place to turn. So we must help those in need. Not the government. God's people loving and helping each other and our neighbors. That is what God calls us to do. None of this is easy, but it's our call to service just the same. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for the building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. The tongue is a powerful thing. It can be used to build up or tear down. Be a builder. Do not demolish with your words. If you are not speaking words that build up and encourage, then you're speaking words that tear down. Speaking the truth will seem harmful to those who reject truth. But even when we are treated unkindly for sharing the truth, we can and should only respond with kindness. Not easy, but our call to service just the same. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Be renewed in the spirit of your minds. Put on the new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness, speak the truth with your neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted. Forgive one another as God in Christ forgave you. This is what the renewed spirit does. It battles the old Adam, seeking God's help to love God and love and care for our neighbor above ourselves. Just because the world will chafe at God's truth when we share it. Just because we too struggle with the very same things. This gives us no excuse to lash out at others. It gives us no right to do anything but what we were called to do. Love God and our neighbor. We may struggle with the old Adam, but being renewed in the spirit of our minds gives us access to divine assistance. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love. As beloved children and walk in love beautiful words that we should receive as Christ loved us and gave himself for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. We are blessed with a call to service and whether it succeeds or fails, any selfless act that we do on his behalf, we can know it is pleasing to him because Christ bled and died to make it acceptable in his sight. And the creator of all provides for us the peace which surpasses all human understanding, keeping our hearts and minds in him unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen.